You know that Voight comp test of yours? Did you ever take that test yourself? So Blade Runner, if you don't know, was a movie by Ridley Scott set in the near future, and focuses on a society that has created a new class of subhumans called replicants. And replicants are slaves. They handle jobs too gross or dangerous for humans to do, and obviously they're not in love with this arrangement. Let me tell you about my mother. Our protagonist is Rick Deckard, a Blade Runner. Blade Runners are assassins who hunt down escaped slaves and quote unquote, retire them. And this time, Roy Batty and his gang are the new targets. Short and sweet. If only you could see what I've seen with your eyes. The film is thematically about the troubles of societies and the moral complexities of the citizens within it. What does it even mean to be human, or at least a person? And some of this ambiguity has left room for speculators to question some points that the movie doesn't delve too deep into. Possibly chief among them being, is Deckard a replicant? So let's address some of the evidence that supports that theory. The film introduces the concept of replicants having implanted memories. Implants? Those aren't your memories, they're somebody else's. Deckard's dream of a unicorn, later echoed by Gaff's origami unicorn, suggests that his memories might be artificial. But if Deckard's unicorn dream is supposed to be an implanted memory, then why is he dreaming about mythological beast? Rachel's false memories were of her grandma and of spiders. Is the implication that Deckard believes in unicorns and assumes that he must have seen one to have such a memory? I'd argue that the sequence is more symbolic than literal, and the significance of the dream can be seen as a metaphor for Deckard's pursuit of something elusive or mythical. His own humanity? Eh, more on that later. Another of the arguments for Deckard being a replicant is the presence presence of his reflective eyes in a certain scene, a visual cue used throughout Blade Runner to indicate a character is a replicant. Notably, during a scene where Deckard stands behind Rachel, both characters exhibit this reflective eye effect. However, this interpretation overlooks a crucial aspect of the film's production. The effect was a result of the lighting and camera techniques employed to create a distinctive look for the replicant's eyes. Ridley Scott and cinematographer Jordan Cronenworth, Cron Cron Cronenwealth? Cronenweth? Okay used a technique that could inadvertently cause any character's eyes to reflect light in a similar manner if they were positioned correctly relative to the light source. This means the shiny eyes effect seen in Deckard and Rachel's scene is not definitive proof of Deckard's nature, but rather a byproduct of just the film's visual style. In essence, it's just a technical goof. Fuck it, it's just a movie. Let him worry about it. And ultimately, there's a larger, looming piece of evidence. Ridley Scott himself has been quite vocal about his belief that Deckard is a replicant. Do you expect the film to address the, the ongoing debate about whether Deckard is or isn't a replicant? Is that going to come he up? He is definitely a replicant. What I thought was thought. You like that? Yes, I do. That's my. Well, that's what I think. But I don't. <laughs> Did you win money? Now, I, for one, am a big supporter of author intent being paramount to a piece of art's meaning. Who knows better than the creator? But there is a question concerning the stage at which a piece of art no longer belongs to the artist, instead, the people. <laughs> For instance, if Leonardo da Vinci came back to life and decided he always wanted the Mona Lisa to have a mustache, then how would you feel about that? And your answer probably tells you how important Scott's ideas on the topic are to you. But today I want to offer not whether Deckard is a human or a replicant, but rather why Deckard should be a human, and how it hurts the movie if he's just another replicant. So let's get into it. Deckard's journey begins with his cold and different attitude towards replicants. Tasked with hunting down these artificial beings, he displays a mechanical efficiency in the role, embodying the societal view that replicants are mere objects devoid of any true humanity. This initial stance sets the stage for his transformation, highlighting the deep-seated prejudices and the lack of empathy that characterizes his early interactions with replicants. On the other hand, Roy and his team have big personalities and exhibit a zeal for more of the life that Deckard seems to be tired of, but Deckard is about to begin a transformational process that starts with a woman. Rachel, a replicant with whom Deckard forms a complex relationship, serves as the catalyst for the first shift in his perception. Two pivotal moments underscore this change. Rachel saving Deckard's life, and their burgeoning romantic connection. These interactions challenge Deckard's preconceived notions about replicants, confronting him with the undeniable humanity of these beings. Rachel's actions, coupled with her vulnerability and emotional depth, begin to erode Deckard's indifference, making him question the morality of his actions and the very foundation of his beliefs. Would you come after me? No. The transformation that began with Rachel reaches its climax through Deckard's encounter with Roy Batty. In their final confrontation, Batty, despite having every reason to harbor hatred towards Deckard, chooses to save him. Following this act of mercy, Batty delivers a powerful monologue reflecting on the nature of morality and the fleeting beauty of existence. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. 
This moment serves as a turning point for Deckard. Witnessing the profound humanity in Batty, a supposed machine, fundamentally alters Deckard's understanding of life, morality, and the value of the memories we hold dear. Deckard's journey of transformation culminates in his decision to run away with Rachel, a choice that signifies his complete rejection of the societal norms that once governed all of his actions. This decision is not merely a personal escape, but a radical act of empathy and love, affirming his recognition of replicants as beings capable of love, fear, and ultimately, humanity. In essence, Blade Runner is a story about a man who learns to be human from a robot. That's a high-impact theme and gets completely lost if Deckard is just another replicant. Of course he sided with the replicants. He is one. It's more compelling that a human on the winning team still chooses to side with the replicants against all of society being against him because it's just the right thing to do. And if a guy like Deckard can change his ways, then there's hope for humanity yet. And that's just from the first movie. We lost our stomach for slaves, unless engineers. Blade Runner 2049 further explores the consequences of this choice, revealing that Deckard and Rachel's union led to the birth of a child, a testament to the blurring lines between human and replicant. More on that later. For now, let's explore how Deckard being a human helps elevate the choices to make Kay unambiguously a replicant. So if Deckard's story is the evolution from an enforcer of oppression to an ally of the oppressed, then Officer Kay's journey is the awakening from an indoctrination slave to a revolutionary. Because you've never seen a miracle. In Blade Runner 2049, Kay's story serves as a stark contrast yet a thematic continuation of Deckard's journey. Kay, aware of his identity as a replicant, initially upholds the very system that enslaves him. Fuck off, Steve job. His discovery, the quest for the child born of a replicant, ignites a transformative journey. It's not merely a search for truth, but an awakening to his own individuality and a call to action against the oppressors. Kay's rebellion represents the next step in the fight for freedom, the oppressed rising to challenge their condition. Deckard's leap of faith facilitates Kay's choice to release the shackles from the same society that convinced him he's a subhuman. You've been getting on fine without one. What's that matter? A soul. Because the catalyst that sets Kay on his journey is finding a lead to Deckard and Rachel's child in the first place. Now, there's a few things here to unpack. First off, if Deckard is a replicant, then him and Kay basically just have the same story arc, and that's just kind of pointless. Seeing the same structure from two different perspectives adds a layer of depth that Deckard being a replicant just removes. But secondly, what makes the child special is that it was born of a replicant when that's supposed to be impossible. The world is built on a wall. It separates kind. Tell either side there's no wall, you bought a war. Now such a thing would still be impactful if the parents were both replicants, but how much more impactful is it if the child was literally half human, half replicant? The first movie promising that there's hope that a human can have empathy for a replicant, promising that in the future maybe we could get along. But the second movie takes it a step further by establishing that the child represents the literal fusion of flesh between humans and replicants. How can the argument be made that replicants are subhuman in the face of such a person existing? This idea paints a future where replicants and human kind interbreed so much that the distinction no longer even makes sense, and that would be an extremely powerful motivator for those who maintain the wall to want to destroy any evidence of it once and for all. This breaks the world, Kay. It's not just about the biological implications, but the thematic resonance. This crucial plot point underscores the necessity of Deckard's humanity for the narrative's coherence and its thematic depth. In 2049, the social structure has also gotten a layer deeper. If replicants, or skinners as they're racistly called, are second-class citizens, then holograms are third-class citizen under them. You don't like real girls. So thematically, it's a perfect line to draw from Deckard being a human who loves a replicant, and then Kay, a replicant who loves a hologram. I mean, the stuff writes itself, come on. The thematic continuity between Blade Runner to Blade Runner 2049 enriches the overarching narrative, creating a layered and nuanced exploration of what it means to be human. Deckard's humanity sets the stage for Kay's journey, providing a foundation from which the sequel builds and expands upon the questions of identity, autonomy, and morality. Without it, I'm just not sure you're left with anything other than a pretty cool cyberpunk romp. And I hope Ridley Scott wanted more than that for his work. Fuck it, it's just a movie. Let him worry about it. <laughs>